It's a while since I've looked at an ozone generator, so let's open another one and see what's inside. This one says ozone sterilization I8. ILSE, don't really know. Um, yes, anyway, it is a multi mode unit and it's designed to go in your fridge. It's USB C rechargeable, and when you switch it on, it starts producing ozone. From roughly the center, let's see if you can hear this. I'm not sure if you will. Uh, I shall hold it next to a microphone. I don't know where the microphone is in this. To hear anything, I'll try it next to this one and see if, if any noise occurs. This also lets me find out where the microphones are in this. I'm sure I've lost track of that. Anyway, now I've done that, it has multiple modes. It's got three presses to go through the mode settings. And the first one is for five minutes every hour. And it lasts on one charge for seven days, which isn't that long. Ten minutes every one and a half hours is the next mode and it lasts for nine days. And the final one with the light blinking, I think, uh, is um, 15 minutes every two hours and lasts for about two weeks. This clip comes off and I think this is clipped together. Where is my spudger? How is this going to open? There's no screws on it. Ah, but there is a front plate. Is that just stuck on? Let's try and spudge that. The risk of making splintering noises. That's it. That's clipped on. Air that or I've just broken a pillar. Is that going to come out? So here is the ozone generator which is based on the stainless steel plate with the spikes behind it by the look of it, and it's got three of them, and a high voltage applied in that. Uh, I now see one, two, three, four screws. Let's see if we can get them out. What is the circuitry going to be like? What size of battery is it going to have? I don't think it's going to have a big battery because it's uh, actually, I can kind of see a hint of the battery from outside here. Um because it doesn't seem to last that long on a charge going by the instruction manual, unless they've just used a super low capacity battery. Maybe that could be upgraded. It's an 18650. And that is changeable. I've just put shredded plastic in there. Maybe I should have used the correct size of screwdriver, but I didn't. So there's the high voltage generator, there's the little ozone module. I'll whip all these out, and there's the circuit board. I shall take the circuit board out, making sure this is marked so I know where it goes back in. I've already made the, the video of this. Uh, interesting to note that they've kind of trapped the high voltage wires over there. Oh, this circuit board isn't held in well. Oh, that's held in by a single screw. That's a bit crap. Okay, is it going to come out now? Is it going to come out now? And I shall wiggle this connector off. And they've kind of put this round like this, the high voltage wires. This is this white wire is a high voltage wire going to the metal spikes at the back. The green wire is a ground wire that goes onto the metal plate at the front. And I normally kind of keep these separate. Uh, right here, I'll tell you what, I shall reverse engineer the circuit board and we'll see what's on it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. And it's not a bad design. It's got some features about it that makes it kind of more interesting than the usual one, particularly the extra protection chip. So we have a USB-C port, and sadly, this is one of these ones that has omitted the 5.1K resistors that you often find with that to tell modern smart chargers to send power out. So you'll have to use this with the, a dumb charger, basically, to actually get it to charge the battery. The battery is charged via an LTH7R, um, which is a 3K resistor, which is quite a high value. Um, and the lithium cell is currently on test. So it's going to take a while to test because it's discharging around about 500 milliamps. So it could take a couple of hours to do that. And I'll put a note of its actual capacity in the description down below. But there's also a protection chip, a DW. O2R. Now you may be familiar with the DW01, that's the lithium sash, lithium cell protection chip. I always said battery and cell and battery there, that's the Satry. A lithium Satry protection chip. And uh, it is usually the 
sensing chip and then a couple of MOSFETs, the DW02R puts that all in the one package. And it senses the voltage and powers itself in the cell via this 1K resistor in a little decoupling capacitor. Um, if the voltage goes above, goes too high, it will cut off. If the voltage drops too low, it will cut off. Uh, we have some decoupling capacitors. We've got the two LEDs. One LED is driven directly by the LTH7, and the other one is driven by the microcontroller. And then it's really, it's only using three pins, this microcontroller, though it's interesting that it's got a little extra test pad that says three hertz, so they can do a quick check that the processor is running. And it switches the power module, the little high voltage uh, ozone generating module, via an A2SHB, but it's quite odd the value of the resistors they've got, which I shall show you on the schematic. But before that, I'll show you the high voltage modules, well, the emitters. Very recent, reminiscent of my Russian Nuclear Corporation project, if you want to take a look up at that. Uh, it has stainless steel punched with three spikes, and it's got a little stainless steel plate with three holes directly in front of that. It applies a high voltage, usually negative on the spikes, positive on the plate in front, and because the spikes are very close to that, it causes an iron, iron short circuit where it, the electrons charge into the air, and then they transfer over to that. But in the process, it's so vigorous the activity, it creates an airflow, but it also, at the tip of each of these little points, you'll see a slight corona discharge. In a very dark room, you'd see the tiniest little hint of purple. Corona means crown. It's nothing to do with coronavirus. It just means you'll get a little spray of uh, energy at the tip as it uh, basically breaks the molecules near apart and they reform in various forms, including the desired ozone for the deodorizing effect in this instance. Uh, very interesting things. The high voltage module that drives it, it's a uh, usually a single transistor driving a self-oscillating transformer and then the output of that through a little uh, high voltage step up transformer goes via usually with this just a single diode and a single high voltage capacitor on the output let's take a look at the schematic the module is potted in resin it always takes ages to get these out maybe i'll depot the module in another video, not sure, or you could just look at the many videos that I've made where I've depotted modules. That would probably be easier. Here's the circuitry. There's the USB port. It's got a decoupling capacitor. There's the charging chip, the LTH7, which has its little red indicator LED to show it is charging, and a 3K resistor to set the charge current. Another decoupling capacitor. And then the lithium cell with its little um, voltage monitoring circuit. Interesting that they've got a capacitor here. That's not shown the data sheet for the DWO2, but it's fine to have it. Uh, but that it gives it a nice, the capacitor gives it a stable monitoring of the voltage across the cell. And if it drops too low or goes too high, it will actually break the connection to the negative. The microcontroller has its own little decoupling capacitor to zero volt rail, zero volt rail down here. And uh, it's driving the blue LED via a 560 ohm resistor. Interesting that they've used 560 for both these resistors, uh, LEDs. Then it's got the button going to the zero volt rail and then the output to switch the module on, which goes via a 10K resistor with a 20K pull-down resistor. Now, to be honest, the this little MOSFET, the A2SHB, yeah, it's very sensitive, but really, ultimately, you want to have as high a gate voltage on that as possible with just the limitation of 3 to 4 volt supply. So that it would have been better if this had been 1K and 20K, or if this had been 10K and that had been 100K. But they didn't do that. I wonder what their logic was behind that. The A2SHB is a very classic N-channel MOSFET. It switches the module. Under load, the module, um, when it's running, is 40 milliamps at 4.2 volts, and that creates the high voltage that then uh, creates the airflow and the um, active air molecules. The active air molecules, I do have to mention this because people will go, oh no, it's ozone and everybody's going to die. Um, the reality is that the uh, active air molecules are pretty much identical to the ones that are just made in the background in nature. It's what nature uses to keep things sterile. And yes, when there's pollution, you get more ozone. That's because nature is trying to deal with that, that pollution. But there we have it. It's a very standard model. Mod, yeah, model and module, um, and it looks very functional. So I shall update the description once the cell has finished its capacity test. 